I think a huge influence was listening to Nuzrat Fateh Ali. The typical way of creating an Antara Mukhada was not what he was trying. He was not just a tune smith making songs. He had taken the responsibility of conveying the emotions of the entire film. He's not only a music lover, he's a film lover. Tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning 30 years, Rahman Music Sheets. Hi friends, how about finding a top take? A wow factor in this episode. Do watch it till the end to grab this harmonic moment of the day. Rajiv Menon, filmmaker, cinematographer, singer and actor. Yengalude target makkal padai talaivan perumalai kudikarudu. Dead or alive. We have decided to call this Operation Ghost Hunt. Three films Rajiv directed had music by A.R. Rahman. Rajiv also shot Bombay, Guru and Kadal. Rajiv and Rahman started hitting the right notes in advertising films much before Roja. In Roja, Rajiv was offered the role played by Arvind Swami, but he refused. Roja, Rahman's debut feature film as composer. Keen to establish his identity, Rahman was searching for his signature sound. Mr. Menon, when he was trying to get this new sound, you were there. Can you tell us what was he searching for and how he reached there? I think he didn't want a cluttered track because, you know, there was some idea that, you know, there was this film which was happening in a village in, in Tamil Nadu. And then there was this really mountains and uh, the mountain air and everything being clear. So there were these two uh, things. So his tracks had a lot of space and I, uh, and it was very basic kind of instrumentalization and the melody was coming through very clearly. And uh, the typical way of creating an Antara Mukhada was not what he was trying. He was trying something completely different. The different musical forms like, uh, so there is a bit of Tamil folk, there is a bit of classicalism, there is a bit of chorus and there is reggae and, and there is a rock ballad. So a lot of different styles which were there uh, was coming into him. You just mentioned that Mr. Rahman decided to move away from Antra Mukhda structure of a song. You know, we had interviewed Mr. Gulzar and he had something very interesting. Yeah. Let me show you that. My big experience was with him. And where I will tell you what is the contribution of Rahman's contribution in this film music. Because he had a form of traditional Rawaiti form. A Rawaiti form of the song. एक मुखला है मुखले के बाद फिर म्यूजिक आता है फिर अंतर आ जाता है अंतर के बाद एक क्रॉस लाइन आती है और फिर उस वो स्थाई के साथ मिलती है फिर स्थाई वापस ये ट्रेडिशनल या ये रवायती ढांचा सदी सदियों से चला है सदियों मतलब एक सदी तो उम्र है सिनेमा की लेकिन जब से शुरू से गीत इसी शक्ल में लिखे जाते थे और इसी शक्ल में चले आ रहे थे रहमान ने वो तोड़ दिया वो होराइजन स्थाई का लौट के कहाँ पर आएगा वो पता नहीं वो जिस तरह क्लासिकल सिंगिंग या सेमी क्लासिकल में विस्तार करते हैं वो धुन को उस तरह से विस्तार करता है और वो एक से एक लिंक होते हुए वो बढ़ते चली जाती है 
तो मेरे लिए ये बड़ा खूबसूरत अंदाज था क्योंकि ब्लैंक वर्स के करीब आ जाती है ये नज़म के करीब आ गया है ये गाने की शक्ल ये सबसे बड़ी कंट्रीब्यूशन है रहमान की जिसने ये बदल दिया ये ये ढांचा बदल दिया आई थिंक दैट इज यू नो एमिनेटली क्लियर इन 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 लॉर्ड ऑफ द सॉन्ग्स दैट ही वॉज डूइंग बिकॉज यू नो ही स्टेर मी दैट इन सम ऑफ दीज कवाली सॉन्ग्स दे वॉन्ट स्टार्ट विद द Uh, main hook line they will start somewhere else and then the suddenly the beat will come in and then the clapping will start so why is it that you should put the most beautiful aspect of your song right in the beginning it can come a little later so these kind of thoughts uh, was what he was recognizing in in music and then you know bringing that together <laughs> I think a huge influence was listening to Nusrat Fateh Ali and uh, you know that entire exposure to Qawwali music that was happening and uh, on the other side you know he was listening to uh, Balkan music Bulgarian music and you know all that aspect of the Adriatic sea uh, something and he was saying that there's so much music which is it's just not arabic music it's music from morocco and then he was listening to african music and most importantly he was watching a lot of films he was watching iranian films he was watching this so he would go on these trips and then he would buy a, a whole lot of dvds and come and then he had some of the most interesting uh, experimental dvds so myself when the, you know money would get them and we would see it and then how did this guy pick it up how did he how does he know like cuba cuba and all that like really experimental films shot in cuba by a russian filmmaker he would get the dvd so i said how did you know it did you know about it did you read about it he said no boss i just go to a dvd store and i look at all the things if there are nice looking title no if it's slightly different i'll buy it if it is not interesting i'll throw it i'll just buy it. so it was this kind of approach that let's walk into the hmv showroom in oxford street and just buy all the dvds that are there which i like and let's share it with my friends what differentiates ar from other musicians is that he's not only a music lover he's a film lover he enjoys good cinema iranian chinese you name it he's always watching it and he's not a great fan of just the hollywood stuff you know he's he was always interested in the indie cinema and he was always interested in different things so i think also because he his groundwork his basic work of his musical training was doing background scores for commercial indian cinema so he had a very strong understanding of how 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 mechanized is the way people look at background scores i mean just say okay when a hero in smiles you put a, a you know sitar and when the person dies you play a shenai and, and then there is drum rolls for fights he said this is really stupid why can't you have a different music from that so you know he had these thoughts as a youngster 15 16 year old playing in these big groups with all these old established men and background scores are an anonymous art nobody knows who makes them and suddenly here was this man who was making music and becoming a star and he was being recognized for it so he managed to uh, you know pull that off कहीं तुम हार गया तो तुम हमको तीन गुना लगा देगा बोलो शत मंजूर है ही वाज अ मैन हु वाजंट रेडी टू बाय इनटू एनी ऑफ द फॉर्मूलास दैट हैड वर देयर इन द इंडियन फिल्म स्कोरिंग टेक्निक्स एंड ही वाज कंप्लीटली ब्रेकिंग फ्री आउट ऑफ इट एंड बिकॉज़ ही वाज यंग एंड ही वाज फियरलेस एंड ही वाज वर्किंग विद यंग म्यूजिक डायरेक्टर यंग फिल्म मेकर्स ही कुड गेट अवे विद इट एंड वंस इट वाज सक्सेसफुल then the industry started accepting it but what made him different is 
he was not just a tune smith making songs he had taken the responsibility of conveying the emotions of the entire film he wasn't composing for 3 minutes he was composing for 1 hour, one and a half hours or 2 and a half hours he was taking on a 150 minute film and saying all the music in this has to be exciting <laughs> and therefore people just started listening to his music you know just for the background score and you know clips started getting circulated and and uh, in what was great is his appreciation that the musicians were doing to his music and the contribution of the flutist and count for the first time in india the record cover started saying flute by navi based by peter carl peter so you started having instrumentalist names which was never there in indian films it was music director lyric writer and a singer as though nobody else existed but rehman bought the, those background artists who were working day and night their names on and they were completely devoted to him in that process he was a person who was experimenting who was young was asking them to bring it and he was using these various instruments in a different manner and not using it the way the film industry was using it and trying to find a different sound and also communicate the entire emotion of the film rather than scoring for one little shot he was scoring for the emotion of the scene that's what made rahman so unique So by the time he comes to films like Rang De Basanti and things so he's ready to collaborate with uh you know sick music uh, he's ready to collaborate with Dalair Mehndi or he's ready to collaborate with all kind of musicians all over India you know so therefore uh he was open and welcoming Uh, all kind of musicians into his studio and he enjoyed that process his devotional songs have been timeless do you think there is some kind of a magic when the song is about faith and spirituality big chart busters in jodha akbar and uh, his mola song and uh, there are so many of these kind of songs which are unique and they are so subtle and mola 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 mere mola then there are these whispery melodies that i call you know dheemi 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 khushboo hai tera badan it's like a whisper mere re 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 so it's like as though it's being composed for a way whispery kind of a flute so he has these it's not that everything is going at that big loud ballad you know and and that's what makes it uh, that when you compose a tune there is a certain volume in which you're going to do it and there's a kind of singer which can correctly produce it khushboo hai tera badan and then there are songs which is not crooning which is really loud and and then there's rawness of the folk so i think that's what uh helps him and he loves traveling and he loves listening to different kinds of music and uh, so it's it is very open musically ponni nadi vakanu me igariya samari pulu kulla Mr. Menon, now in films, you have different composers for songs and for background score. Barring few exceptions, Mr. Rahman does the entire score for the film. What do you say to that? I think Rahman belongs in that sense to the earlier school of uh, filmmaking, where he felt he has he has to take ownership of the music. Right now, people feel that I am hired just to give a hit song, and so. 
in one film you can have three different hit songs bought from different places and just placed into the film and background score is different but all that is part of the musical creation and that's what Rehman feels and he's probably the last of the really big music directors who are controlling the entire music in a film. So there is a certain sense of authorship that you're controlling. And I think he's deeply interested in the storytelling process in films. So he's not just here to make songs. Walking down the corridors of faith, the family embraced Sufi Islam. How did that impact Rahman's music? With some intricate, intimate and untold details. Rajiv Menon will be back in our next episode. Stay with us. We had a very strong understanding of how, how, how mechanized is the way people look at background scores. I mean, just say, okay, when a heroine smiles, you put a, a you know, sitar and when the person dies, you play a Shainai and, and then there is drum rolls for fights. He said, this is really stupid. Why can't you have a different music from that? Do you agree that this indeed was the moment of the day? Is your choice different? Whatever your mind says, write it in the comments section below. We will be waiting. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained.